welcome to EPG Patshala. In this module of advanced R, we are going to discuss about some advanced plotting functions which R provide us. In these two modules that we have dedicated to discuss about the advanced plotting functions like ggplot2 and lattice, we will basically concentrate on what are the features that these two plotting functions provides us. In this module, we will concentrate on the specific features of ggplot2. In the previous modules, we have come across several plotting functions that were there in the base package of R. Indeed, we know they are very useful and they cater several needs of us, but still there are some shortcomings that the plotting function functions gives us. So, these two functions, advanced plotting functions are basically there to avoid these shortcomings. Here with the help of ggplot2, we will let you know how histogram, box plots, scatter plots and some basic plots can be done more elegantly with respect to the basic plotting functions. Basically, there is some grammar behind the plotting functions called ggplot2. So, we will explore those things as well. Along with the scatter plots, we will let you know how a line can be fitted to know the underlying trend of the data. So, this will be discussed in this module. So, let us see what is there in this module. So, as we know that ggplot2 is an R package and primarily it helps to produce graphics. By now, we all know that R has several other plotting functions. So, what is the special thing that directs us to learn about this package? Actually, unlike most other graphics packages, it has a deep underlying grammar. This grammar makes ggplot2 very powerful. The reason behind this is that here, one is not limited to a set of pre-specified graphics, but one can create new graphics that are precisely tailored for the problem made specifically for us. This is a very easy to understand package. Actually, this ggplot2 package takes care of many features at a time. You can choose the default options as well here. Actually, it is not needed to make your graph look pretty. Instead of this, one can concentrate on creating a graph that helps to reveal the underlying mes message in your data. ggplot2 package was developed by Hadley Wickham. You can find all the details of this package in the book ggplot2 Elegant Graphics for Data Analysis written by the developer himself. At first, we will learn to make a wide variety of plots with the ggplot2 function. Also, we will consider the qplot function. qplot function makes it easy to produce complex plots. It takes only a line to show the graphical structure. So, the question is why this? This is because qplot is based on the grammar of graphics and this only helps one to create a simple and expressive plot. As we all know, by calling question mark qplot, you can actually know more detailed descriptions of the arguments of this function. You can install the package with the command installed.package. Here we are considering the diamond data example, which is there in ggplot2 package. This data set consists of prices and quality information about 54,000 diamonds. Now have a look at the two ports that have been given here. For the first one, primarily we are using the variable CYL to specify the colors. So, using this we are having a plot with continuous color scale. Have a look at the output that is given here. But instead of the first one, if we use the second one where we have used the factor of the variable CYL, then we are having the plot that is shown here. Here as we can see from the data set that the CYL variable can take only three values which are 4, 6 and 8. For the first plot, the color is changing in a continuous scale from 4 to 8. 
and is taking each of the values 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. But in case of the second one, as we can see, only the factors have been considered. So, each of the factors are discretized and is represented by different colors. You can use different aesthetic mappings as well. Have a look at the R code that have been given here. For the first one, shape is equal to factor of CYL is used as an argument. Whereas for the second one, size is equal to Q sec is used as an argument. So for the first one, as you can see, the shapes are changing and different shapes are used to represent different values. But for the second one, the sizes are changing in an increasing order. Now look at the respective outputs to have a clear understanding of this. You can actually play with the arguments being used. Like here, if you use this R code, then you are going to have the following plot. The interesting thing is that the legends are also combined here, which was not there when you use the usual plotting functions. Now have a look at the following plot. Things would get much clearer after seeing this plot. Another interesting thing of this package is that if you have a scatter plot with many data points, it can be hard to see exactly what trend is shown by the data. In this case, you may want to add a smoothed line to the plot. This is easily done using the smooth geom. Here we have used multiple geoms by using a vector of geom names created by the C vector. Now look at the output that we are having here. It approximately shows off the underlying trend of the data and it is shown using the blue line. You can do this using linear modeling with the argument method is equal to lm as well. Now unlike the simple plot function, this qplot offers us many more things. We would explore all these in due course. Like here, one could also load the MGCV library. We all know what is the MGCV library is and uh, we can use method is equal to GAM for fitting a generalized additive model. This is similar to using a spline with LM but the degree of smoothness is estimated from the data. So the things related to scatter plot have been discussed extensively. Primarily you need to do more and more experimentation with the arguments of the function qplot as we have shown here and by this way we can explore the different things associated with the scatter. Now here comes the idea of the bar plot. The discrete analog of histograms is the bar plot. Here we need to use geom is equal to bar. So the question is how does it work? Here the bar geom counts the number of instances of each class. So what is the advantage of using this? Here actually we don't need to tabulate our values beforehand. We usually do it for constructing a bar plot associated with the basic R functions. If the data has already been tabulated or if you or if you would like to tabulate class members in some other way such as by summing up a continuous such as by summing up a continuous variable you can use the weight geom. So have a look at the R code and the output which is shown here. Now suppose one wants to flip the bar plot by 90 degree. That is instead of horizontal bar diagram, if somebody wants to have a vertical bar diagram, then what do we do? Use the code that is shown here. As you can observe that here one additional thing is added and that is quad underscore flip. And using this unlike the previous vertical bar diagram, here we are having a horizontal bar diagram. Look at the output and observe the difference with the previous one. Now let us do some experimentation with the colors. Have a look at the two R codes. 
observe the difference in the outputs when we are using color is equal to factor C y L instead of using fill is equal to factor C y L. You can also fill by variable. Look at the R code. Here we have used fill is equal to factor of gear and look at the output that we are having here. Here actually we are having a component type of bar diagram which is very interesting. Now let us again go back to the diamond example. Here we are trying to have a bar plot with categorical variable clarity. Now here what we do is we are changing the position argument with stack dodge fill and identity. You can have multiple bar diagram, component bar diagram, subdivided bar diagram and types like that just by changing this position argument. So have a look at the argument that we are having here. You can have a frequency polygon as well with the argument geom equals freq poly and then one can do experimentation with the position argument. Look at the code to have a better understanding here. Next consider the idea of another type of diagrams which we often come across and that is histogram. Histogram and density plot show the histogram and density plots show the distribution of a single variable. We have come across box plots here. So let's see how we can draw a histogram using this new plotting function. Look at the two lines of R code. The first one is giving a histogram corresponding to the variable whereas the second one is displaying the density plot corresponding to it. So both of them are meant to show the distribution of the variable. Here is the output that we are having here. Have a look at them. You can always change the bandwidth with the argument bandwidth. If you want to make it more colorful then you can always use the fill or color argument as we have seen previously and hence can obtain colorful plots like this. Indeed they are visually more appealing than the previous ones we, which we have come across. Here we are introducing another two of the very commonly used plots naming box plots and detail plots. Here we are introducing another two of the very commonly used plots naming box plots and jittered points. Suppose a set of data includes a categorical variable and one or more continuous and we are interested to know how the values of the continuous variables vary with the levels of the categorical variable. In that case we can use the box plots and jitter points. Geom is equal to jitter gives us the jitter points whereas geom is equal to box plot will give us the box plots. Have a look at the plot you can surely have a better understanding for this. Now if you want to make it more colorful then experiment with colors. Explore the options that we have considered a little while ago and look at our following plots that we are getting from this. This plot shows a colored box plot along with the legends. Another interesting feature is that using the summary function you can actually obtain the summarized information of a plot. Just use the summary function that is the one we have used here and have a look at the output that is given here. Now consider the code that we have used here. Looking at this you might be thinking that what is happening here. Actually these codes help you to save image of your plot on disk and as you can see you can always specify the other details as for example height, width and many more within the argument of the plot. So as we know that line and path plots are typically used for time series data. One interesting fact is that line plots join the points from left to right and how does a path plot works? It joins the points in the order that they appear in the data set. Line plots usually have time on the x axis. What does it show? It shows how a single variable has changed over time. 
path plots show how two variables have simultaneously changed over time. So it aptly displays a time series data. Have a look at the R code and the line diagram that it generates. The line diagram shows the relationship between time and demand of oxygen. Here we are considering the BOD that is biological oxygen demand data. Again if you want to color the plot then the next plot will serve the purpose. We have already discussed using aesthetics that is color and shape to compare subgroups drawing all groups on the same plot. So what is faceting and how related to all these things? Faceting primarily creates tables of graphics by splitting the data into subsets and displaying the same graph for each subset. The advantage of it is actually this helps us in the work of comparison. Have a look at the plot. You can also control the scales in facet using the commands that are given here. Similarly, one can experiment with facet, grid, scale, margin and many more things. There are some other options as well which we can control. Let's see what are they. As we know that these are all similar to the ones we have seen in the plot function. Here there are xlim, ylim functions to set limits of the x and y axis. Log is a character vector indicating which axis should be logged, if any. Now let's see how it works. If we take log is equal to x with in inverted commas, then that will indicate to log the x axis. Also log is equal to xy with in inverted commas will log both the x and y axis. So our problem is solved. Again main is the main title for the plot will appear in large text at the top of the plot. Also like the plot function xlab, ylab are the labels for the x and y axis and these can be character strings or mathematical expressions. So as you can see from this module we come to know what is the different kinds of functions that the ggplot2 package offers us. We know extensively the syntax of the qplot functions and many more. We come to know how we can change the uh, values of the geom argument and we can have different kinds of functions. Indeed we are having the same histogram, box plots, line diagram, scatter plots and many more that we have got in case of plot functions as well which are associated with base package but here we can customize our plot with respect to our own need. Indeed there are many more things that can be uh, done here that can be uh, known here but we are stopping here and we you can know the details of the functions which are associated with the ggplot2 package from the book written by the author of the package we can. So till now do study what we have discussed here and let's concentrate on the next module which is primarily based on the lattice package.